Hello, this is Carl Irwin uh, with a short Blender uh, tutorial. I guess you would say this isn't really much of a tutorial, but more of a uh, uh, kind of a look at some features uh, that are, are new um, to a certain branch development of a Blender. And I have to admit, I, I must have been living under a rock uh, on a different planet in a different galaxy for a little while now because I was completely unaware of this uh, branch until I just kind of stumbled upon it uh, in an internet uh, 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 search. And uh, I found this, this branch that's called the um, uh, uh, PBR branch, and it's a current 2.77. Uh, I'll, I'll go to the website here to show you where you can get this. It's it's created by this fella here. I don't really want to try to say his name because I'll probably uh, crucify it, but it's a French uh, fella who is a, a, a CG artist uh, who has uh, been working on uh, this Blender branch that does um, physically based rendering using OpenGL, uh, GLSL uh, resources. So uh, you can find him. This is a Blender Artist post that I happened upon. Now I had heard about this a while back. Uh, some, uh, a, a few people interested in this kind of a uh, branch. Um, I also heard in some of that discussion a while back a lot of, I don't know, complaining and criticism from some of the uh, uh, Blender founders uh, concerning the, I don't know, fanaticism over PBR viewport rendering. And I don't know, I think there's there's a, a little bit of a snobbery to be had there among some of those guys, to, to be quite honest with you. Um, but, but I have a case to make here uh, to kind of push back against any of that um, reluctance to, to uh, uh, pursue these kinds of features. Uh, let me just explain what this is. I can take you to uh, his website here, this uh, uh, person posting here. Uh, this is his website. You can see it right here uh, up in my search bar. Uh, this is a 720p video, so you ought to be able to catch this, and you can uh, uh, go there. Uh, maybe I'll put this also in the uh, description. Um, but, uh, I, again, I don't want to try to say it, but I guess I'll try it. I think it's Clement. Uh, Facult. I'm not really sure how you say it. I'm not French, obviously, so um, I apologize for that. Uh, but this is uh, this fella has been working on this uh, this branch, and uh, the, the idea is that in OpenGL and GLSL, the way Blender has been uh, uh, created, the viewport and game engine uh, OpenGL GLSL mode, there is no physically based um, rendering. There's there's no, there's no shading that is generated by physically based properties. Apart from the OpenGL lights, uh, have have some you know approximate physically based uh, uh, properties. But there's no light bouncing. Uh, so what you can't have is you can't have reflections, true reflections, or approximate approximated reflections, um, and you can't have any light bounce. Um, you can't have those kinds of things where uh, objects can interact with each other in terms of the way their shaders interact and light interacts. So um, now here's the problem is that uh, in Blender uh, up to this point and in a number of game engines, they're really behind uh, the curve with respect to OpenGL rendering. There's a lot of OpenGL rendering platforms, particularly in uh, 3D compositors, that have been uh, using more physically based rendered properties and, and abilities, capabilities for quite some time now. Um, probably the most popular one that, that people are aware of is uh, the video co-pilots, uh, Andrew Kramer's uh, Element 3D has uh, physically based rendering properties in it and that uh, it, it can approximate certain reflections uh, and uh, you can have a, what's called a plane reflection where you have a flat uh, piece and uh, it can reflect objects off of it like a mirror. Then there's also uh, uh, other kinds of reflections like box reflections uh, that you can apply to uh, three-dimensional objects that are not flat planes. And these approximate reflections 
that look realistic. They're not absolutely authentic, but they are realistic and they are uh, much better for using uh, uh, OpenGL rendering for production quality rendering. Um, another thing that uh, this this kind of rendering can do in OpenGL, GLSL in some platforms is you can get refraction approximated again, approximated refraction, so that you can have uh, transparent uh, refractive materials like uh, glass and fluids and such. <coughs> so um, what this individual has done is he has uh, ported some of these abilities into the OpenGL a viewport capabilities in Blender, and uh, this has been a long time coming. Now, now this is my case to make uh, why this is so important. I've heard uh, for uh, quite some time from a number of people uh, that are uh, big Blender users and people that generate tutorials, make videos, and are also developers, that everyone needs to be moving over to the Cycles rendering platform. That uh, the internal render engine is dead. It's it's a it's a lot a, 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 a an older technology. It's useless. It's outdated. Not useless, but becoming useless. And uh, Cycles is the way to go. And also along with that, the nodal uh, compositing is uh, the way of the future. As a number of compositors are now. Uh, uh, nodal in there in the way that they function uh, and um, e you know e e even though it's been a few years since uh, some of these statements have been made a lot of people are still using the internal render engine for things and and, and you know here I am I'm doing OpenGL rendering using the viewport uh, capabilities and some of the material settings which are stuck to and tied to the blender internal render engine so my case is you ought to develop this physically based rendering using OpenGL and GLSL because by doing this you can push people to more widely accept and learn uh, the cycles side of Blender. Uh, let me show you what I mean here. I'll open up this. Um, this is the uh, version again 2.77 which is current uh, so this is up to date uh, but this is the branch and um, this is a, a render that I made that will look very familiar to you, those of you who like CG tutorials, particularly cross-platform ones. So this is something that I rendered out. And um, you can, you know, take a look at this. You can see what it is. This looks like something that um, Andrew Kramer did uh, using his uh, Element 3D platform for After Effects. And you'll notice that in this uh, little clip, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's actual what looks to be authentic reflection uh, on this uh, plane here. It looks like uh, some kind of a car paint. Uh, and you can see these uh, reflective surfaces here, this uh, kind of chrome looking reflection. All of this, except for, uh, except for some of the compositing, some of the glow effects and whatnot, this is all uh, OpenGL. And they're not, it's not multi-layer composite. This is all from one pass. Uh, and this is from this branch. So, um, you know, essentially what uh, this individual has done in this branch is they've created the capabilities of Element 3D within Blender. And um, <clears throat> we can take this a step further. Uh, this is another video that I rendered out. And you can see uh, as I scrub through this what it is. It's a TIE fighter. Now this... This uh, uh, TIE Fighter has some uh, properties I'm going to show to you in a minute here. It may, may not be very evident right in the video, but it's actually reflecting uh, itself on the reflective surfaces. It's also reflecting the world um, uh, situation here, this world texture. Uh, so this is this is pretty cool, and I'll show this to you in the uh, viewport. But I also want to point out that this model itself uh, is a video copilot model. Um, they just put out a uh, a group of Star Wars uh, themed models, a couple of vehicles, and a few items. And uh, I imported one of these models directly into Blender and used all of the uh, uh, UV mapped uh, uh, textures and threw them into the uh, cycles nodal shaders and uh, came up with this open GL render. So 
you know, that's all within the cycle side of everything. And, um, you know, that's a, that it's all a good reason to endorse this person's, uh, uh, efforts, uh, and, and probably, probably accept the reality that this should go into the, the long-term branch, uh, the, of, of Blender. This should become, this really should become a widely developed feature, uh, for Blender. There's no reason why it shouldn't. Uh, and any uh, suggestions to the contrary are nonsense. So that's what I think anyway. Let's take a look here at uh, what this looks like, and I'll show you a few of the features. Now, I'm still uh, trying to learn uh, how to use this. And really, I just discovered this today, uh, late this afternoon. And um, let's take a look at what's going on here. So we have the model. Let me space this out a little bit. You can see that there's, uh, you know, these are cycles shading nodes. This is not uh, Blender internal stuff. This is all within the Cycles render engine. And we'll zoom in on this uh, model here and you can see that we have reflective surfaces with uh, there are some maps for specularity on there. You can see uh, I'm also using the screen space ambient occlusion. I can turn that off, turn it back on again. Uh, so this was rendered using that. Uh, it's also casting shadows uh, on itself uh, from an OpenGL light, and the uh, sun lamp that's in here uh, actually is using some of the game engine um, properties. You can still jump over to the Blender game engine and turn on uh, some of the features because it's, it's just an OpenGL light, but you can turn on some of the features such as uh, the uh, variance um, uh, buffer type here for the shadows, so you can have softer shadows. Uh, you can use all of that stuff, and we're looking at it from the Cycles Material um, viewport rendering. So this is OpenGL, GLSL rendering, but it's physical-based rendering. Notice that in the um, reflective material here, it's actually reflecting itself. If you look in there, you'll see that it's reflecting the wings uh, from itself uh, as well as the world uh, and the shading that is on here is coming from the world and from a light so um, you can use now in OpenGL rendering using this branch uh, on the cycle side we can now use equirectangular world uh, textures to light OpenGL objects uh, and that's pretty cool. That that gets us a much more authentic uh, and much more easy to generate uh, lighting setup. So, um, yeah, this is pretty exciting stuff. Let me show you uh, sort of how this uh, goes together. Uh, if we go over to the World tab, uh, you can see here that it says Update Probe. So the probe is referring to uh, what uh, uh, what is being used to generate the uh, lighting here from the world. So so that's what this is referring to is is the world lighting this uh, uh, th 360 degree. There's also a plane in here too. This nebula is a separate plane that is also set. You'll see there's some parallax motion. Uh, this plane, this nebula, is actually uh, set to the add blend mode. I went to the uh, uh, game engine side of it, to the material, and I and enabled the add blend mode. Even that works. So all of the game engine settings uh, can work along with all of the other settings in this branch. It's pretty cool. It really changes the way I'm going to work from now on, I can tell you that. Um, I'll also mention that I discovered some of the, I'm not sure if all of them do, but some of the procedural textures also will load into uh, this uh, directly from the um, uh, Cycles nodal materials. That's a different uh, situation from what we have in the internal render engine GLSL. Uh, you can't use procedural um, textures without uh, pre-rendering or baking them. Um, but here it would appear that we can use some of those things. So, uh, I mean, look at the shadow. That's that's a, a shadow being cast from an OpenGL light um, onto uh, a texture that has reflectivity. I mean, that's really, really cool. Um, yeah, there's no, nothing, no other word for it. Now, if you look at the uh, reflection here, the way this works, if I click on that item, so this would be for the uh, windows. 
if we go to the uh, object settings and we come down towards the bottom, it says there's another a setting for viewport probe. Now this is referring to the reflectivity. This is set to a cube map. So what it does is it, it essentially treats everything around it as if it was mapped to a cube, and then it can reflect uh, as a cube. It, it's an approximation reflection uh, to the uh, geometry. This is not perfectly authentic to what you would see in a cycles render. If I go to the render uh, viewport here, you'll see actually none of it really works all that well because it's not set up properly. Uh, if we come back to the material setting, but it won't render uh, it quite right uh, from the cycle side. It won't look exactly like this if you have everything set up properly. The reflectivity would be a much more accurate and authentic because it's fully ray traced. But this is a, an approximation that's close enough uh, to give us a, a very realistic looking uh, render, uh, something that you could use for production uh, rendering. Um, you know, look, look in here at just look at the uh, uh, the way these textures are working together. So these are all the original textures, uh, specularity textures and whatnot, all mapped together using the uh, nodal setup. So pr pretty cool stuff um, that we can get away with here. Uh, if you have just a flat image, like a tabletop, uh, you can use the planar um, uh, viewport probe. Now there's another one called an object viewport probe. I'm not fully sure what that does. I, I haven't played around with that enough, but I think that it ties um, what you see in the reflectivity to a separate object that you can move around the scene and that will uh, adjust the mapping. I believe that's what it does and of course then you can turn it off to none. You see there's no more reflectivity there. So this would be regular OpenGL. You still see the specularity, everything that's on the material, but there's no reflectivity. Uh, to it. So we'll turn that cube map. Look how fast it loads too. It just renders incredibly quickly. Uh, if I go back to the camera view um, and we'll just uh, scrub forward a little bit more here. So we'll come in watch this and we can use the OpenGL render buttons as, as we always have. Uh, and you know just a second and you have a full HD frame there. Very very fast rendering uh, and, and much more authentic uh, texturing and shading and lighting going on there. So um, very, very, very cool development. Um, I'm still learning it. I don't know how everything quite works. I, I need to see about using mist uh, and some of the Z-depth characteristics, see if some of that stuff can be mapped. Um, and even if it can't, uh, at least it gives us the opportunity within Blender to generate passes with reflectivity from this side and then maybe other mist passes or Z-depth passes from the traditional uh, Blender internal. Uh, at least we can do everything all in one application. Um, but anyway, so I'll be playing around a lot more with this and probably uh, doing more tutorials that uh, deal specifically with this branch. So I I really truly hope that this branch continues on and I want to encourage the developer or developers to uh, um, have faith in this project because I think this is very very useful uh, for for Blender and, and would I, I think would convert a lot of people um, uh, towards using Blender from some other platforms uh, and, and certainly I think it's going to cause me to be uh, much more interested in the cycle side of Blender so that uh, you know if you can see in the viewport something that's considerably more authentic and fast rendering to what you see in the cycle side it, it is it's more likely to cause me to generate a scene and then let it render overnight in cycles because I can preview things well enough to know uh, uh, for the most part exactly what it's going to look like and um, you know that's very very beneficial uh, and, and, and would be uh, cause me to be more likely to use that cycles render engine rather than uh, feeling like I'm wasting my time uh, with bad renders. Uh, so anyway, just wanted to share this with you. Um, if you have any questions, please don't ask me because I really don't know the answers. Again, I'm just trying to sort this stuff out uh, uh, for the first time. Uh, but again, I'll take you back to this website. You can go here or check out this um, uh, uh, Blender Artists uh, thread 
and uh, ask your questions there. The developer is on this thread, and uh, I'm sure he would be more than willing to get back to you. You can see uh, how frequent these updates uh, have been. So this has been going on for a couple of years. Like I said, I've been completely oblivious to uh, what um, what all of this stuff is. I'm very, very, very fascinated to see this happening. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, all I've got for you right now, and um, we'll see what kind of tutorials we can come up with here in the future using this branch. So I hope this is useful, and I wish all of you happy blending.